All right. All right, so here you have right here in New Amsterdam, which is New York, you have the indigenous people here. All right, once again, look at the hair texture. The Lenape were the Algonquin. They spoke Algonquin. All right. As a matter of fact, Benjamin Banneker was from the um, Abanaki tribe, in which that was also part of the Lenape or the Algonquin people. These are just the quote unquote native names that we utilize. Here it is North American Indians. Look at the North American Indians. Don't look nothing like what you see now or have been taught to view as North American Indians. Here's some more pictures. And the sister, as you see here, is leading the discussion. She is up at this time. This is where Robert Rules of Order comes from. As you see, she's holding within her hand what would be symbolic to the one in which that would speak. And she's looking at the individual on the right who has up his hand in order to um come forth in order to give the interpretation similar today to when you see Negroes walking out of church and they got that one finger up symbolically all right um, right here you see how at one time we was connected as far as there was the corporation which is the United States and we was America there was the United States of and we were America, United States of America. United States do not have a superior position. We have the um, superior position. This is why they try and strive so hard to put us into a second class citizenship because we actually had a position above them, which was told to us by the Great Seal National Association of Morris Affairs founder or Clark of Destiny founder, or Clark of Destiny of the Great Seal, founder by the name of Charles Mosley Bay, or CM Bay, in which that he told us this within the Clark of Destiny 1 and 2. All right? He told us this within the Clock of Destiny 1 and 2. All right? So keep that in mind. Here we are before the so-called United States Corporation. Now, this is George Washington, his staff, and look how dark the people are in which that he's talking to. We're wearing turbans, head wraps. This is the same thing in which that we noticed on The Roots, a movie this past Sunday. This is where Prophet Noble Jali gets us wearing the head wraps. In particular, as you see here, the, these head wraps are red. Here it is again. You can see the word America. And once again, they've shown us this is a sister here with feathers. But look at her hair. Her hair is very curly, kinky. Not the straight hair Indian in which that we've been accustomed to. But she is indigenous. She is an aboriginal. And it's obviously right here in New York that they're showing you this because here's the Statue of Liberty right below.
and they shown you um, this is the United States Corporation, the Empire State, and above is showing you the indigenous land. Look at the word indigene or gene from the Latin indig um, indigena, sprung from the land. This is why we use the word indigenous. This is why they try to make something bad out of it, which is indigent, in which that allegedly means um, poor or can't pay for, you know, that, that type of nonsense. When even indigent comes from the word indigene, in which that simply means to spring forth from the land. As a noun, a native, literally inborn. Auto Chokdongas, native, indigenous, 1845, from Architon. All right. Here it is that we used to, um, I think we went over this last time, but we used to. Um, treat them real bad. They called the savages. As you see here at the bottom, it's, it's called the savages. All right. And the reason why, of course, we use the scalp them. As you see here, we use the hang them. So now this is what we refer to as the karma stage. In order to get the Indians to behave and stop attacking European settlements, they told the Indian descendants that they were that they came from West Africa. That's what happened. They started educating us and giving us the books. After the Reconstruction era, that's what the whole Reconstruction era was about, was to start giving us books in which that they control, and we just regurgitate the information. This is why I say he who um, controls the education controls the lives of the people. Education happened to be one of the nine battlefronts mentioned by Francis Quest Wilson and her teacher, Dr. Neely Fuller. One of the nine battlefronts, education. So we have to re-educate ourselves. Prophet Nobudra Ali said you do that by changing the literature. All right, Brother Taj is always saying about change the literature. And that's what we are doing. This is why we are doing these classes. This is why um, we do the radio shows, the YouTube or videos or lectures, is to help change the literature. The reason why I write my books is to help change the literature. That's that's what we have to start doing. And each each one of us have that um have that ability and and actually have that duty to carry out. Right? This is the habit of Kuni Shakti a Cherokee chief. Look at the original image. Now you see the altered image. They even changed the date. What you can't see is that he has locks in his hair with a band around with a feather, a red feather coming from the cat from his own from his own forehead. Chief Oshhawk. 
right here, 1845 photograph, original. The European white version of whitewash. So this is what the whole construction era was about in the late 1800s. Was to change not just the books, but remember they had to they had the Mohawk Conference. Now why call it a Mohawk Conference and then say we have to discuss the Negro problem if the Negroes were not the Mohawks? I mean, we've seen Mr. T for years rocking the Mohawk, telling you that his ancestry was Mohawk. If you have a melanated couple and child, palm tree right here looked like an alligator, so must be in Florida or near Florida. Here we have another chief and pointing at a map of America telling you that that's where we come from. The complexion of Carolina Indians is black, not much different from that of the Ethiopians. They always compare us to the Ethiopians. He goes further. The hair is black and thick and not very long, tied back to the head like a small tail. And for the physique of these men, they was well proportioned, minimal height, a little taller than we are. They have broad chest, strong arms and legs, and other parts of their bodies as well composed. They broad in face and have big black eyes. They have a sharp cunning and algae, um, and are algae and swift runners. This is, um, this is how those in the Carolina on the map look. This is, this is us. Look at the hair once again. You see, this is another um, discussion here. Can you hear me? Yes. This is Blue. Um, when you mentioned the Ethiopians, um, I had researched some of the names of Africa, and at one point, one of the names I found was Ethiopia for that the whole continent. Right. Is it possible that they were referring to Ethiopians as being from the entire continent this time? Yes. Yes, but they also used the word for Ethiopians or Kushites was the word Kushite more. Okay. And so the word more became synonymous with being Ethiopian or Kushite. We went over that in the first class when we was doing a presentation, in which that we showed that even in the definition of more, it had the word Ethiopian. So more in Ethiopian was synonymous during that time period. Mm -hmm. Okay. Another picture of a native. Another one. And I understand that these are coming from various books, from various libraries around the country. And what was that is verifying this? Right here, Bernard Ship. There was in the first a very large black Indian of an aspect very different from those who inhabited the interior of the country. See? Those who inhibited the interior of the country were the ones in which that I said was the plain Indians. Most of them were more Mongolian. Because remember, we told you earlier that the Chinese came here in 459 AD. All right? Mm -hmm. They're the ones who, who came here, sailed here in 459 AD. But then you also had those who came down through the Bering Strait, the Mongolians, in which that, of course, becomes the Eskimos and the Aleutians, who were uh, related to the Eskimos, which was also Mongolian. 
or Chinese, Oriental, Asian. Okay? So they were the ones who dominated the interior of the country. But the so-called, quote-unquote, southern coast, east coast, west coast, along the Great Lakes, we surrounded them, and it was mostly us. All right? The barbarians of the coast are black in this manner. He says it right here. Because the sun is there warmer than elsewhere, because they are constantly in the water, which is salt. For the land being dry and sterile, they are obliged to fish in order to um, to subsist. When the Indian has approached, so see, he's saying that they're black, they're Indian, they're black Indian. This is everything he's interpreting. Now, understand that this is from his book, The History of Hernando de Soto in Florida. Chapter 8, page 472 through 473. All right? The top pictures from Florida's Constitution by um, John um, O'Gilby, 1671. Florida King, North America, 19th um, 19 century. 1723, another indigenous um, drawing. So it says right here, when the Indians had approached the Caravel near enough, he placed himself on the on the prow of his vessel in a voice full of hastiness or haughtiness to, um, told the Spaniards, according to what the interpreter asserted, that the Spaniards were robbers. What did they come to seek upon the coast and that they should leave it in haste? Otherwise, he would burn their brigade um, brigantes and put them all to a miserable death. See that? That's the way that we used to be. That's why they called the savages. When my wife and I went to the British Museum and we went across the street, well, up the street to the, um, the United Grand Lodge of England, one of the largest Masonic lodges in the world, the museum curator followed us and he asked a question about how you feel about the possibilities of your first black president. And my wife, you know, looked at him and said, it was nine before him. You know, or he made the ninth one, something like that. And he jumped back like Mike Tyson hit him, literally. And his hands were shaking. And he said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? Now, who's the they? Well, he's talking about his so-called pale Albion constituents. Masonic brothers here within the so-called states. Did they let the cat out the bag in order to let y'all know that y'all was Moors and that y'all land mass, that y'all indigenous to here and not Africa? Did they tell y'all that? Did they come out and tell y'all that there was already presidents prior to George Washington and that he wasn't the first president and that he was like probably the 17th president? Because he was the ninth under the quote unquote uh, first under the Constitution for the United States of America, ninth under um, the Articles of Confederation, in which that came about 1781, in which that was um, helped written or proposed to be um, by John Hanson, who was the first president of the so-called United States Congress Assembly and many consider him to this day to have actually been the first president John Hanson alright we know that to be the truth now the Omex black <coughs> history in America does not start with slavery the Omex tribe is the oldest civilization in America archaeologists named that the Omex meaning rubber people because they were the first people that found to make rubber soles for their shoes and play games with rubber ball. They were 
originally the Dogon tribe. Remember we spoke about that earlier, who migrated here from Mali, Northwest Africa around 1000 BC. We say further back than that. All right? We say further back. 1000 BC is only 3000 years ago. We say more than 5000 years ago. They already had settlements here. And this is what brought and we went over in um, class, the last class. This is what really brought um, Abu Bakari the second, the brother to Mansa Musa. He was an emperor, and he gave up his power, the gold, the wealth, in order to seek voyage, in order to come here, quote unquote, to the Americas with his brothers and sisters. In 1311, he let out 200 ships. In which that one came back, in which that told the tale that um, the captain said he seen them go off into the fog, you know, into the currents away from them. He said they turned around and came back, but they kept, the rest of the 199 ships kept going. The following year, in 13 in 1312, going to 1313. Um, Emperor Abu Bakari the second, the Kiata the second says, I'm going to jump on the damn ship this time and take us there. And this time, 2,000 ships. 2,000 ships. So that's 2,200 ships. And people want to ask the question, how did we get here? I'm telling you that we came here if you want to say that you just came from Africa, you did not come by way of the Albion. You came by way of Abu Bakari the second, in which that it is stated that he landed in Brazil. That he landed in Brazil, and that's fascinating because Brazil is said. Um, according to the slave trade based on Emory University, that 5 million slaves was let out there. And we know the Albion could not have that many. He didn't have the process of desolation. And the picture or drawing that they keep showing us is, is, is a drawing. That's, that's it. And there are no ships in which that just less than 150 years ago in which that is in which that they're found they talk about reconstructing or duplicating one in the african american museum there in uh, washington dc but they don't have an actual ship so we know for sure that they did not bring the numbers that they are claiming what they did were take the indigenous people that was already there prior to them coming and they went up and down the eastern seaboard in particular gathering people along North America coast, Central American coast and South American coast and switching them back and forth between the adjoining islands, having the adjoining islands as the breaking ground. But Abu Bakari came here over 800 years, right? 200 years before Columbus, in order to be with his brothers who was already here, as it just said, 1000 BC, which would be over 3000 years. But if you read any books on the Omex, they say the Omex was already here over 5000 years. There's new information coming out now in which that actually dates them back over 20,000 years. All right, so right here, the Omex first settlement in Mexico and known for their Colossus head sculptures. Each Colossus head was about nine feet tall, weighed around 24 tons, and carved out of one piece of rock. These heads were found throughout North and South America. The Olmecs also built many of the pyramids in the Americas as well as mounds um, as they became known as the mound builders, which are us. You are the descendants of them. But this is just a portion of 
African blood from many impacts, but there are people within our tribe, within our families, our clans, in which that demonstrates that most of us did not come from just Africa recently, at least not within the last 400 years. And what I've seen with Henry Louis Gates telling people that they came from Africa is that I'm not hearing about the markers. The markers should be indicating when we came. Was it before the 400 years of what they refer to as the transatlantic slave trade? Or was it after? You know, was it before? Or was it during? Or was it after? Those are the questions we have to ask. And he says the red man or what is known as the Indians did not exist in America until the 4th century. When the Chinese from Asia migrated here and mixed with the Omex. But the Omex didn't disappear. They later became who? Washita, Cherokee, Tunica, or Freeman, you know, Seminoles, Moors, etc. Or what we were known as Black Indians. Most of these tribes um, became the first slaves, prisoners of war, or POWs, and was now known today as African Americans. Black, Negroes, Latinos, and Hispanics. All right? The Omex are the fathers of American, or the mothers and fathers, actually the mothers and fathers of American civilization. Right? Dean Augustine, present day Omex man of K.O. Belief. Omex with the first people in the Americas, and that's quarter of a that's that's just moderately, and that's not the first people. It's the first civilization, a documented civilization, in which that is not definitely the first. We've been had civilizations, um, here. Um, Atlantis was a civilization, but here you have the African Americans or the Omex. Here you have the Seminoles, a group of so-called Black Native. Americans who descended from this escaped slaves, this is what they're saying, and freed blacks who aligned with the Seminole tribes of Florida. Right here, this is what I was talking about. Here you have Fanny Campbell, who is Ruth's mother, an Aboriginal American, and Ruth um, Simmons, first African American president of Brown University. Well, guess what? Finding out about roots. Fanny Campbell, mitochondrial DNA was proven to be 100% indigenous to America. 100%. Her female lineage had no African DNA and has been rooted in the Americas for thousands of years. You see, once again, these are the markings that we are talking about. Show me the markings, Henry Louis Gates. Show me the markings. Indigenous. Indigenous. Seminole. Husband and wife. Indigenous. Florida. Here you see a turban on the head. They would be classified as Moors or Melungeons. You have the Shoshuni, Timothy O'Sullivan, another Shoshuni, William Henry Jackson, to this picture. And this brother looks identical to John Amos. What is the real reason for so called Native American boycotting the red skin mascot? But that's because you can see the apparent connection here. Denzel Washington looking just like an in, in indigenous chief. Brother here looking just like the symbol um, in which that 
tray mark of the I believe is the um Indian Cubs baseball. Snoop Dogg. Snoop look damn near identical to to the brother. Indigenous. Right here. Scotty Pippen. Look identical to the brother. Same nose, lips, facial features, forehead, everything. Right here. Another picture. Brother had his own TV show. But here, he looks just like the native. Because we are indigenous. Mary Pollock of the Choctaw Indians, or Choctaw, and Makita on Davis. Aboriginal. The Septum um, Pearson was popular amongst Native American tribes such as the Shoni and many other tribes of the Pacific Northwest Coast. This is the Encyclopedia of Body Adornment by Margot DeMello, 2007. And it's back in, back in style now. As you see here, comedian, comedians, We have a chief who looks just like this sister right here. Indigenous. The Shoshone Indians, as they was called. Solid Jefferson Creek. Henry Leeds, Sue. That was painted in 1913. There's more of a recent picture of a brother demonstrating his native roots, his indigenous Aboriginal roots. I think some of these we went over. Um, he would have a white eagle and um, rainbow. Um, Sistisu, and he was doing some some heavy things during the early 1900s. It's the Pamunkey Nation, one of the 11 Virginia um, Indian tribes recognized by the Commonwealth of, um, of Virginia. Powhatan. In early 1600s, John Smith explored the first permanent English colony described the indigenous people that he was at war with on the eastern shore of America in Jamestown, Virginia, the Powhatan Indians, the Algonquin chief. He states, more like a devil than a man with some 200 more as black as himself. This is 1624. Originally published 1624. The General History of Virginia, New England. In the Summer Islands. First Louisiana Native Guard, 1861. These are natives now. Look, look hard. Not the Indians you used to see in Louisiana. 
But we know that every time that you go to Mardi Gras in New Orleans, you see the natives and they or indigenous people there, and they always are dressed in their native attire, and it's always quote unquote so called blacks, Moors. But here, Pima and Dime classified as African uh, African American blacks, uh, Hispanic Latinos, etc. You see here Moors, Indians, Negroes. When the Moors was driven out, thousands of um, took refuge in the south of France, who abhorred the um, Roman Catholic prosecutions, became Huguenots, and that of these many immigrated at a later date to where? South Carolina. This is from Harry Copy, History and Conquest of Spain by the Arab Moors. So when people say, "Oh, you ain't, uh, uh, you ain't no more," well, guess what? Show them this book, Volume Two. It states that the Moors left Spain and came to South Carolina. Brief description of North American Indian, the complexion of deep brown tone, and they exhibit the common Aboriginal American characteristics, of course, black hair, brown eyes, and rather heavy faces from the book of Native Americans of ethology and backgrounds of the Native American Indians. Got a picture? Got the picture? Spence Johnson, Choctaw. Explains stories, District of Vandenberg, interview between 1936-1938. The person interviewed is George Fortman. All right, location, Eversville, Indiana. County, Luana, on Crow. Creole, Creole. It says, My two ancestors, John Hawk, a Black Hawk Indian brave, and Rachel, a Choctaw maiden, had made themselves at home such as only Indians know, understanding and enjoy. They was a hunter and a, um, he was a hunter and a fighter, but had professed faith in Christ through the influence of the missionaries. My great grandmother passes the fact, passed the fact on to her children. And that has been handed down for four generations. I, in turn, have given the traditions to my children and grandchildren. He was Choctaw and who? Black Hawk. This right here is scary if it ain't. Uh, they look damn near identical. But they got on Pharrell about wearing the Indian, said so called Indian on feathers, um, the long one that trails down to the ground in the magazine um, last year or so. But yet, he looks more native than the so-called natives that is on the land. Like we said, 49 to 80 percent of them are not even native. They are actually Irish, Scottish, not even Indians. Uh-oh, they go Taj, brother Taj, looking just like full-blooded Indian. Or African Americans are the full-blooded, or better yet. Yeah. They are the pure-blooded, so-called Indians.
to Cisco. Blackfoot. Blackfoot. And then you wheel. And then the wheel, which is Cherokee or Selegi. Chickasaw. Mida. Cree. Red Dog. Yamasees Indians and Yamasees also referred to as um, the Omo Carteric Kakin or the Ama Cerise or the Amir Corio were listed among the 19th tribe as being dark complexion found there widely scattered amongst the inhabitants of North and South America. They were assumed to be immigrants from Africa prior to the European discovery of America. So how, how the hell would they know that? But anyway, whom Locus or Lucas Velquez the Alone persists in slave hunting in Beaufort, South Carolina. Sound like the same place because in Beaufort, South Carolina, that's where the Gullah people are located at. Who they refer to as the Geechee. And this was in 1520. Alion referred to the Yamasees as Negroes being valuable laborers. This is Carolina Genesis Beyond the Color Line by Scott Withrop, page 6566. Some of the so called Indians at Indian Village in Michigan, St. Ines, INS. The brother over here looks like Mike Epps to the right. The brother in the middle with the bald head looks like my former teacher, Dr. Hargrove, in college. The Narragansett Indians of Rhode Island. Also of Connecticut as well as also will be referred to as the Boston area or Massachusetts area. Undeniable. This is the Algonquin tribe. This is the reason why our language is Algonquin, because that's what we mostly were, was Iroquois Algonquin. This is the Algonquin. You have any mothers, fathers, grandparents, grandmother, grandfather, great grandparents that look like this, then more than likely, you are. Hey. And you say, what's the Universal Dictionary 1937 edition defined as American? An Aboriginal or one of the various copper colored natives found on the American continent by the descendants of Europeans. The following is the original application of the name Maru. Maru. Which is short for America. Or American. Here we have the various copper color pennies in which that correlates to our skin complexion. 
and not those trying to steal our birthright. Here you go to the teachings of Pahahotep, the oldest book in the world, by A.C.G. Hilliard the third. The word mir means the guardian of. For Meru, this is Meru right here. The owl and the mouth of Ra, Meru. Means the guardian. Here it is here again. The guardian or the guardian of. The guardian of what? Well, you go to Stolen Legacy, the Greek philosophy of Stolen Egyptian Philosophy. George G. James, he tells you, in the 8th century, the Moors, native of Mauritania, Moor in South Africa, invade, invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture that which they had preserved. Basically, they was known as the guardians of wisdom. So hence the guardians of, of wisdom. Knowledge in the ancient days were centralized, spread it through um, um, considerable portions of Africa, ancient minor, and which is actually Europe. So you know, during the occupation of Spain, the Moors displayed considerable credit. The grandeur of Africa. Let me go back. The grandeur of African culture and civilization. Now you go to the Celestial Ship of the North, written by Valencia Stratton, E. Valencia Stratton. Look at the word here, Maru, once again. And it says, the garden of the tree of life, the pole, the polar region, said to be like the seed cup of the lotus and the lotus of immensity. Maru is called the great will altar stairs by which men could climb heavenwards. At each step, a planetary heaven was established in their different cycles of time. Maru was also a name for the thigh, the matrix, or the mother of cultists who described it as the exalted mass of glory, um, the veritable um, haunts of the gods and heavenly um, choristers, not to be reached by sinful men. So what they're talking about, Maru actually means the backbone of the um, of Osiris, which is the Dijig, which is your 33 um, spinal column, in which that you raised Kukulini up heavenly. And we became known as the Marus because that's what we used to do. We was the serpent people. Named after Kukulini, serpentine fire, because guarded by the serpents, hence the Ida and the Pengala, called the, they were the furious serpents, the winged will, seraphims, the four rivers, the cardinal points of the world, symbolized the four sacred animals, the protectors of mankind, who were the watches over karma on earth. So who was the Maru? The Maru or the Moors are the watches over karma on earth. This is why when you read in a Holy Quran, so the seven, the Moors were known as the principles of light. It was the bearers of light. They was the ones who brought light to the world. Maru was the celestial mountain where the gods and the, head, and the highest celestial beings dwelt. So to have the title Maru or Moor means that you was one of the highest celestial beings. That's why Noble Jolie said, don't call them niggas, call them dirty moors. Because they're not striving to be the pinnacle of enlightenment, as well as the mythical birthplaces, birthplace, dealing with astronomy or astrologically. The celestial pole, the throne of Jehovah, Ru is the mouth, the outlet. Maru is also imagined as an island, hence Atlantis. This is how the island of Atlantis came into the situation. It was actually um, the Caribbean islands. And we was the coast of those islands, which we was called Atlantis, as we showed you in the last class, that America was, was once called Atlantis. Um, a lotus and a tree, co-types of emanation from the water. It was celestial. 
So being called Maru or more was celestial, not just um, being the watchers over karma on earth in which that earth is the land in which that we tie ourselves back to land because the word more also means anchor. Just like the soul is anchored into your land, which is your physical body, earthling. Hence you name after the earth. Okay? Ancient America. We've come down. America is popularly, popularly supposed to have received its name from the Mariner, Mariner, um, a ver um, Americo Vespuscus. Actually, Albertico Vespucio, son of Anastasio Vespucio, had the Italian sought immortality by christening the continent after himself, he would have surely have honored his family by calling it Vespucia, just as Colombia was named after Christopher Columbus. In Central America, the word Americ signifies great mountain. Remember, we just said that. Evoking what? Meru. The sacred mountain in Hindu tradition said to be the center of seven continents. Ancient America was linked with India. Why? Because they called this India, hence the term Indian. Hence, we have ancestry in the West Indies through the Los Lomoria. The early voyages probably believed America to be the native word for the land itself. So they too would use it. You see how they said America was the native name for the land? Espucio, comrades instead of Albertico would nickname him Amerigo. The Italian um, cartographer gleaned information about the New World from many sources and would surely adopt the native name for the, cult, for the country calling it America. Some native tribes called the land Atlanta or Atlantis, Echoes of Atlantis. You see? This is from the book. Alright? This is from the book. Um, Gods and Ancient Spacemen of the West. All right, you had even for those who, how did Christopher Columbus come here? He was a spy. All right, he was um, made to spy upon, or he talked his way into spying upon the Moors. When the Moors left in 1492, some left and went to back to Africa, but some came over here. They wanted to know what was it over here. That they was coming to. And why would they leave. Spain. Without a struggle. The last stronghold was Granada Spain. And we left. Without a struggle. No battle. So. He was sent by King Fernandez. And Queen Isabella. Who lived in a big red barn. Not much different than the red barns in which that you see cattle and stuff in in the south and up through um, the mid um, Midwest. But right here, Columbus had two captains of Muslim origin, Moors, during his first transatlantic voyage. Martin Alf um, um, Alfonso Pinzon was the capital of the Pinta, and his brother, Vince T. Um, Yanex Pinzon was the captain of the Nia. All right, now the other one was Pedro de Moor, who was called Peter de El Negro. He was of the Nia, the Penta, and the Santa Maria. He was the head of the Santa Maria. All right? So he had all three Moors. Now, you go to the book, The Biggest Secret, by David Icke. Some say Icky, but it's Icke. Um, the Brotherhood had known about the Americas for thousands of years and Christopher Columbus was used to make the official discovery so that the occupation of the Americas could begin. Secret Destiny of America by Manly Palmer Hall. Christopher Columbus, who may have been an agent of esoteric order connected with Lorenzo de Mestici and Leonardo da Vinci, English intelligent uh, intellectuals Francis Bacon and 
Um, also, um, Raleigh, Sir Walter Raleigh, who played unique roles in the court, all right, intrigue in, or intrigue surrounding the settlement of the continent. So he was a spy for the secret order, and it was being sponsored and paid for by King Fernandez and Queen Isabella to spy on us. Right, and Columbus admitted in his papers that on Monday, October 21st, 1492, while his ship was sailing near um, Cabarra in the northeastern um, coast of Cuba, which he called Isabella, he saw a mosque on the top of a beautiful mountain. The ruins of a mosque and the minarets was inscribed of the Quranic verse that had been discovered in Cuba, Isabella, Mexico, Texas, and Nevada. During the second visit, um, visit or voyage, Columbus was told by the Indians of Espino, uh, 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 Espinola, uh, which is Haiti, uh, Haya, that African people have been to the islands before his arrival. For proof, they presented Columbus with gold spears of these African Moors, or as they refer to as Muslims. All right, so, all right, Fernandez, um, Columbus, the son of Christopher Columbus, wrote about the blacks seen by his father in Honduras. The people who live further east in Point Gavendez, as far as Cape Gracios, a Dios, was almost black in color. At the same time, in this very same region, lived a tribe of Muslim natives known as Hamami. The Mandinka, an Arabic language, Al Amami was the designation of Al Imam or Imanu, the Imamu, the person who leads the prayer, or in all cases the the um, chief of the community, and or a member of the Imami, uh, Imani, um, with the word Imani, Imani, a uh, Muslim community. Now Jack Forbes in his book. I'm um, entitled um, Africans and the Native Americans. In 1524, the people of Carolina coast were said to be of dark color, not much unlike the Ethiopians. They keep comparing us to Ethiopians. This is how the trick came in later on. Because these books utilize the fact that we look just like our African cousins. Which isn't a bad thing. However, don't strip us of our land rights by telling us that we just came from Africa when you know damn well we've been here for hundreds and thousands, even millions of years. All right, so here, Croatan, you see here the word Moors. See Croatan Indians. The word Moors, Croatan Indians. All right, right here, the Croatan, where was they at? Um, a village in 1585 on the, on the island. They called it by the same name, such as appears to have been. Um, on which sea lookout this situation is on the coast of of um Carteret County, which is what North Carolina. The inhabitants seem to have been independent of the chiefs of Sekatan. Sekatan. It is thought the lost colony of Lane on Roanoke. All right, joined them, and the trace of the mixture was considerable to the latter um, Hedorat Indians, all right? So the word Moors and Croatan and Hedorat Indians, all of that was the same name. And look, here, go further down. It says, under this name, they now have separate schools, provisions, and admitted to some provisions not according to, not according to the Negro. The theory of descent from the lost colony may have regarded as baseless, but the name itself served as a convention label for people who combine in themselves the blood of the so-called wasted native tribes, the early colonialists and um, forest rovers, the runaway slaves and other Negroes, and probably also the stray seamen of the Latin races from coastline uh, vessels in the West Indians or Brazilian trade across the line in South Carolina or found a people evidently of 
similar origin, designated red bones in proportion of West North Carolina and East Tennessee can be found the so-called melanges, right? Probably from the French melange mix or Portuguese, apparently the outshoot from the Croatan proper and in Delaware, a found the Moors. And all of these are local designations for people who mix race with an Indian nucleus um, differing in no way from the present mixed blood remnants known as the Pamunkey, um, the Chickasaw, uh, which is um, Hominy, and the Nas, um, the Nan um, Simon Indians in Virginia, um, expecting in the most complete loss of their identity. In general, the physical features and complexion of the people of their mixed stock incline more to be Indian than that of white or Negro. General House of Representatives, 1789, 1790, many of y'all already seen this. However, it says a petition was presented in the House of the Soldier Free Moor, subject of the Emperor of Morocco, and residents residence in this state. All right, and was the state of South Carolina. So this is what they just talked about. This is the first page of the Moroccan Treaty of 1787. Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin were closely with the Moors in the Continental Congress to secure this treaty. In the Bovan collection, there is over 200 letters to the Bay of Morocco from the Continental Congress. There were many Moors in the Continental Congress working with the European Masons originally taught by the Moors to form a Novos Olo Seclarum, which is a, um, a new secular order of the ages, an Epilum um, Unum out of many people and nations, one, all right, they wished. The Moroccan treaty is very powerful because according to the Constitution, treaties are the law of the land. This treaty especially details with Moors. The question that may arrive, how do we know what this, uh, where the treaty say Moors that the so-called black people of this time are being referred to? Well, we just showed you that it was talking about Moors here in South Carolina and North Carolina and Delaware and what we just finished and in Virginia. This is people on the eastern seaboard who is called Moors in that article that we just read. All right, Journals of Continental Congress, the Articles of Association, October 20, 1774. This is the time in which that they say was done at um, Liberty Hall in, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in which that um, 1774 through 1779 was when we lost um, our nationality or we were stripped of our nationality and was given artificial labels. All right, it was during this time period. We know that Articles of Association was one of the four constitutions. Articles of Association, Articles of Confederation, Declaration of Independence, and of course the Constitution for the United States of America, not the Constitution of the United States or the United States Constitution. Those came later with additional um, Bill of Rights or amendments. All right? Um, where were taught to believe that George Washington was the first president of the United States. This article is by the United States Senator Charles Mathis shows that it was an amalgamated um, um, more named John Hanson who was really the first president. If America de um, declares its independence in 1776 and George Washington um, didn't become president until 1789, who was the president between 1776 and 1789 for 13 years? Well, here they are. John Hanson, Richard Henry Lee, Elijah Boltnote, Thomas um, Miffin, John Hancock, hence the term, put your John Hancock right here, Nathaniel Gorham, um, Arthur St. Clair, Cyrus Griffin, then you have George Washington. Hence my wife was saying, um, you know, um, there was nine presidents before him. All right? Actually, there was eight presidents before George Washington in this case. The reason you don't hear about them is because, according to Moorish elders, there was all Moors and amalgamated Moors. And this is the truth for the matter. Right? And it was even more before them because these were the ones under the Articles of Confederation. 
You don't even hear about the ones under the Articles of Association, the president. But here we have John Hanson, first president of the United States, served so from November 5th, 1781 to November 4th, 1782. They only served one year. All right. On his site, 1773 to 1783, lived John Hanson, first president of the United States in Congress Assembly, assembled, 1781, 1782. Born, Charles, um, born in Charles County, Maryland, April 13, 1715. Died um, Oxen Hills, Maryland, November 22, 1783, it looks like. Placed by Historical Society on Frederick County, 1953. So when people say, uh, where does it say that he was the first president? Well, right here. Also, in this book, the United States Constitution and fascinating facts about it. And the reason why we're saying this and utilizing this is because, um, not to be name dropping, but um, Ali Muhammad said that um, Ali, um, that that he was a European. And I have not found that. I found a picture in which that they whitewashed. But everything points back to what um, Hakeem H. Y. Bay um, stated, you know, that he was melanated. And my fifth grade teacher, actually, um, my seventh grade teacher, Mr. Harrison, told us, I think it was the seventh or either eighth grade, but he told us that George Washington was not the first president and that John Hanson was. Interesting that in the same book it says that the word democrat or democracy does not appear once in the Constitution. That's, that's, that's amazing because the Constitution is only a re, um, speaks of a Republican form of government. But you keep hearing all these Politicians talking about democracy. When the word democracy comes from the word democrats, which means ruled by demons. Some say that this is John Hanson. Some say that it isn't. Some say that he's the li he was the Liberian um, president during the time of um, during the time of Abraham Lincoln. But here on the back of the two dollar bill, there are two melanated men. The one in which that is circle, which is John Hansen, and then you count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to the eighth, if I'm not mistaken, that is Benjamin Banneker, Ben Bay Mamu Moali, Chief Justice, also referred to as Prince Hall. Here they are. The man on the left is John Hanson. The man on the right is Ben Bay. Ben Bay was born 1731, making him 45 in his picture, while John Hanson was born 1721, making him 55 in his picture. He's the one with the gray hair. Right? If you look into um, their Carter Encyclopedia, you won't see either of these men. But yet, it's on the back of the $2 bill. The names are not on the Declaration of Independence because they were both Moors who had their own government. We had our own government. We did not need to sign the Declaration of Independence because they was breaking away from the Britons and they needed our help in order to do so. We wrote the Declaration of Independence for them. However, George Washington and his cronies never actually severed the ties to the king and they did not win the Revolutionary War. It was a setup to trap the to and totally defeat the Moors from the inside. What you were taught in school is called Reconstructed History. He's the fez of Ben Bay, which that is found in outside of Washington, D.C. in Alexandria at the George Washington Masonic Museum. John Hanson said this on July the 4th, 1776. They may stretch our necks on all the gibbets in the land. They may turn every rock into a scaffold, every tree into a gallow, every home into a grave, yet the words on this parchment cannot, can never die. 
Now, remember, they speak of a man who appeared suddenly in the um in um in the hall, you know, uh, where they were signing the Declaration of Independence. Right? These are actually the words of the man that they're talking about, who was actually John Hanson. They'll never tell you who that man was, but it was John Hanson. And the crazy thing is that he's speaking Algonquin. He goes here, the British king may blot out the stars of um, Kakich, Manichto, the great spirit from the sky. Why, 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 why if he was an Englishman or why would he be using Algonquin terminology for the great spirit, for the great God up above, as they would say? Because John Hansen was an Algonquin, Aboriginal, Indigenous. He mentions the name several times through here. Right here. Kakech Manito. Down here on the next um, sentence. Kakech Manito. You come down to the last paragraph, the last sentence. Kakech Manito. He said it three times. Ritual. This is where they get in court today. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. The gavel being hit three times and all that stuff. Right? But right here, look at this. This is the executive order 11490, October 19, 90, uh, 1969. Called the King Alfred Plan, also uh, put back out by Ronald Reagan, Ronald Wilson Reagan, Mr. 666 Man himself, the Rex 84 Plan in 1984, in which that dealt with concentration camps, executive order. Um, and basically, what he says here, you come down and it says, uh, this memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chief of Staff. This report is now in preparation. There would be many cities where the minorities will be able to put in the streets a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. He will be a formidable enemy, for he is bound to the continent by heritage. Huh? The minority is the so-called Negroes, African Americans, Blacks, Colors. But we are bound to the continent by heritage? And know that political asylum would not be um, available for him in other countries. The greatest concentration of minorities is in the Deep South, the Eastern Seaboard, the Great Lakes, and the West Coast. Same areas that we made mention of earlier that I showed you all them damn pictures. And so you go to Heritage, look what it says. Heritage, look at the underworld lines. It says right here, to inherit from hereditors, inheritance, from air or in air, property that is and can be inherited. Something handed down from one ancestors or the past as the characteristics, a culture, tradition, etc. The rights. So heritage means the rights, burdens, or status resulted from being born in a certain time and place. Birthright. So the word heritage means your birthright. Look what it says in the Bible. The chosen people of God, Israelites. Well, guess who Adolf Hitler say the Israelites were? Or the so-called real Jews or Hebrews. He said it was the Negroes. This is Adolf Hitler. This is why when you watch um, the movie about um, the new movie that just came out called Race. is a movie about um, in the 1930s when um, Jesse Owens went to the Olympics. All right? And the movie shows you or talks about Adolf Hitler didn't shake his hand. Well, if you go and get the real quote of what Jesse Owens said, 
Now, this is what they keep showing this in every damn movie about Jesse Owens I've seen. They always keep showing Adolf Hitler as if he didn't like blacks or he had a problem with blacks. No, he had a problem with Jews. That's why he was um, attempting to exterminate them, allegedly. All right? Because he knew that they controlled the banking system and that they was controlled of finances. And that if America, um, and if they ever did that to America, then he knew um, that the Negroes would never come from up out of it or would have a very hard time coming from up out of it. This is what it said. Go and read his quote. And he speaks about the Negroes being the original Jews or Hebrews or Israelites. Heritage. Right here, every species of immovable, which can be the sus um, subject of property, such as lands, houses, orchards, woods, marshes, ponds, etc., in whatever mode they may have required, either by descent or purchase. Thus, according to Prophet Nubadra Ali's statements made sense, because according to the Holy Quran, Chapter 7, the More Science Temple of America, Marsh Holy Temple of Science of the World, by Prophet Nubadra Ali, this is chapter 47, and it speaks of Egypt and the capital empire of the dominion of Africa. And it says the Moabites from the land of Moab, who received permission from the pharaoh of Egypt to settle and inhabit in northwest Africa. They were founders and the true possessors of present Moroccan empire. All right. Now, all right, I have some people who follow Lord Abba, in which that he states that northwest Africa is not talking about Northwest of Mexum, or of Mexum, North of Mexum, or the Five Gates. Well, we keep reading with their Canaanite, Hittite, Amorite brethren who sojourn to the land of the Canaanites seeking new homes. Seven, their dominion and inhabitants extended from northeast and southwest Africa across Great Atlantis, which is the Atlantic Ocean, even unto the present North, South, and Central America. That's the empire. And also Mexico, who I showed you that was in North, South, and Central America, and in Mexico, and in the Atlantis Islands. It was us originally. So this is talking about us once again. Before the great earthquake, which caused the continent to drift, it was that caused what we now call the Atlantic Ocean. Now, you don't believe that your civilization or empire came before theirs because yours was part of the Moroccan Empire. Go to the Black Star Dictionary. Go to the word amorality. This is deluxe fourth edition, the best one. Amorality says a court which has been very extensive jurisdiction of maritime cause, causes, civil and criminal controversies arising from out of acts done upon relating to the sea and questions of prize. It is properly the successor of the consular courts which was emphatically the course of the merchants and the seagoing person, established in the principal maritime cities on the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. Well, hold up. I thought you was in the Western Empire. When did it fall? I hear the Nation Islam and um, RBG and um, the Rastafarians all saying, down Babylon, down, down Babylon. You know, they all chanting Babylon the fall which is supposedly the Western Empire. So, who is this? It says, establishing the principal maritime cities on the revival of commerce after the fall of the Western Empire. To supply the wants to the tribune that might decide causes arising from out of maritime commerce. Also, the system of ju jurisprudence relating to and growing out of jurisdiction and place of admiralty courts. So the Albion replaced our consular courts with admiralty courts, hence kangaroo courts, Article 1 and Article 2 courts. As there are no Article 3 courts, really. 
the original one's supposed to be in Philadelphia, which I haven't seen anyone um, go to and, and get in as far as um, documentation and to verify that. But we know that the original one was in Philadelphia because that was part of up under the Articles of Association, Articles of Confederation, which was um, li uh, which was what was called um, the Unity Hall. Or Liberty Hall, excuse me, Liberty Hall. All right, but here, look up consular courts. Courts held by the consul of one country within the territory of another under authority given by treaty for the settlement of civil cases. In some instances, they would be also criminal jurisdiction, but in this respect, were subject to review by the courts of the home government. Well, who was the home government? Let's look. The last of the United States consular court was who? Morocco. Who was the, so what was the fall of the Western Empire? Morocco. Once again, right here, Noble Drali said, they were the founders and the true possessors of the present Moroccan Empire. Once again, last of the United States consular courts, Morocco, was abolished in 1956. They just abolished your court. Just abolished it. In 1956. All right, I'm going to leave it there uh, for tonight, and we're going to come back and we're going to finish it up. Um, any questions on anything um, before we go? Is everybody understanding this a little bit better now? That your empire was prior to this one, and the only thing that Albion did was inherit it, and he didn't inherit it through actual being heirs, because heir land can't be sold. But he did it through conquest, destruction, genocide. Right, so their own Black's Law Dictionary verifies that Morocco was the last was the last Western Empire prior to this one coming about, and that it was just abolished as far as the last court was just abolished in 1956. This was during the time of President Dwight Eisenhower, who happened to been a who happened to been a mulatto, a more. Or quadroom, as they say, because his mother allegedly was a mulatto. Which you can actually go and find a picture of, of his mother, and she looks mo Moorish. Okay. Yeah, America is all yours. Yup, funny. 1956 is when the King of Morocco was established, right? And then three years later, the flag on which that Prophet Noble Draw Leaf flew was given to them. So when the President of Indigenous Affairs of Morocco came and spoke to us at the United Nations back in 2007, this is what he said. We are on your land. We have your flag. This is what he said. We have your flag. And he was speaking French, and the interpreter was telling us in English what he was saying. Right? So they know they are the kingdom of Morocco. Right? We are the empire of Morocco. Al Morocco. And their own shit tells us what's going on. We just got to read in between the lines like we just did. Okay. All right. We're going to come back here um, again on Monday.
Um, if you have any questions, um, email me or um, ask me then. Um, let, let's stick to out of commerce. We'll get to commerce very soon. Um, but I want to deal first with this understanding, overstanding, understanding about you, yourself, who you are. Right? And the connections between all of this information. There'll be enough time, I promise you, for commerce. You ain't got to worry about that. All right? When I, when I get to commerce, some of y'all um, think that disinformation is, is, um, is hurting your head. You ain't, get the, you ain't get to nothing yet. All right? Because by the time I get to the UCC information, that's over 19 different documents that you're going to have to learn. You said, who's the more that was so-called um, um, called dirty? Uh, anyone in which that tried to conceal the information from us. Um, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, Henry Louis Gates would be some of the people nowadays in which that um, Booker T. Washington spoke about back in the days. Um, as a matter of fact, Booker T., um, he had a quote in which that I, I, I want to... Um, um, make mention of this is what he said. He said there is a class of colored people who make a business of keeping the troubles, the wrongs, and the hardships of Negro race before the public, having learned that they are able to make a living out of their troubles. They have grown into the subtle habit of advertising their wrongs, partly because they want sympathy and partly because it pays. Some of these people do not want the Negroes to lose their grievances because they do not want to lose their jobs. These are the dirty moors. Whoever does that, who's not telling the goddamn truth, and keep hawking on the victimization. That's why a lot of these cats are suspect, as I hear talking about the RBG, as if our flag isn't red, black, and green, too. The five-pointed star with the green background and the red, um, excuse me, with the, and the um, cherry um, red background and the um, black on um, border, that's red, black, and green. Remember, the forerunner of Noble Dry Lee, was Marcus Garvey, red, black, and green. You never stop utilizing those colors. Those are the same colors that the ancient Egyptians utilized, in which that symbolized resurrection. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to talk to everyone later on. And um, we'll see everybody here on Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace, y'all.